Imagine an ancient species of humans so small they could barely reach your waist. Picture them walking through thick, tropical jungles, navigating rivers, stalking prey, and fighting to survive against predators many times their size. Now imagine these tiny humans not only surviving but thriving for hundreds of thousands of years on a remote island. This may sound like something straight out of a fantasy novel, almost Tolkien-like, with hobbits running through forests. But this is not fantasy. This is reality. Reality. Meet Homo floresiensis, the prehistoric human species nicknamed the Hobbit. And no, not because they love second breakfast, but because of their remarkably small size and almost mythical story. The world first learned about them in 2003, when archaeologists excavating Liang Bua Cave on Flores Island, Indonesia, uncovered the bones of a previously unknown species of human. The discovery stunned the scientific community and forced us to completely rethink our understanding of human evolution. The the first skeleton, known as LB-1, told us nearly everything we needed to know about just how unusual these humans were. LB-1 was a female who stood only about 1.06 meters tall, just over 3 feet, and, and weighed around 25 kilograms or about 55 pounds. This was not a child. This was a fully grown adult. Her skull was especially shocking. It was grapefruit sized, with a brain volume of only about 420 cubic centimeters. For comparison, modern humans average 1,300 50 cubic centimeters, while chimpanzees average about 400 cubic centimeters. At first glance, it looked like she had more in common with chimps than us. This led to one of the first great debates. Was LB once simply a diseased or malformed modern human? Some experts proposed she suffered from microcephaly, a disorder that leads to small brain size. Others suggested Laron syndrome or cretinism caused by iodine deficiency. But as more remains were unearthed, including additional skulls, jaws, teeth, Teeth and limb bones, the truth became clear. This was not a sick human. This was a completely new species. The evidence showed unique skeletal features. Their wrists look more like those of ancient apes or early human ancestors than modern Homo sapiens. Their feet were unusually long, earning them the nickname Hobbits. They had broad hips, sloping foreheads, and forward shifted shoulders. Their jaw bones and teeth showed they were fully adult, not miniature children. But the most surprising part wasn't their appearance. It was what they managed to accomplish despite their tiny brains. Flores Island was no gentle paradise. It was more like a prehistoric gauntlet of survival. Imagine living alongside Komodo dragons, the world's largest lizards, capable of ambushing and killing humans. Imagine avoiding giant storks nearly six feet tall, giant monitor lizards, and even crocodiles. The island was also home to giant rats, some larger than modern cats, and dwarf elephants known as stegodons. These Elephants, though small compared to mainland species, were still massive compared to the little hobbits. Yet, astonishingly, evidence shows Homo floresiensis hunted stegodons, likely using stone tools to wound or kill them and fire to cook their meat. Their diet probably also included fruits, tubers, and yes, those giant rats. How could a species with such a tiny brain manage this level of survival, hunting, and tool making? The answer lies in brain efficiency. While their brains were small, studies of their endocasts, internal skull impressions that show brain structure, revealed a complex organization, the frontal and temporal lobes, areas associated with higher thinking and planning, were surprisingly advanced. In other words, intelligence isn't strictly about size, it's about wiring. Just like a modern smartphone can outperform a massive 1980s computer, Homo floresiensis had brains that were compact but capable. Now comes the evolutionary mystery. How did they get so small? The phenomenon responsible for their small size is known as island dwarfism. When large species are isolated on islands with restricted food supplies and limited ecological niches, natural selection often favors smaller individuals because they can survive with fewer resources. Over thousands of generations, this pressure leads to a gradual reduction in body size. The same process occurred in the elephants that once roamed Flores, which eventually evolved into the miniature stegodons. In all likelihood, the ancestors of Homo floresiensis were subjected to the same evolutionary pressures, shrinking in stature as they adapted to their island environment. The issue of their ancestry remains one of the most debated questions in paleoanthropology. A dominant theory argues that they descended from Homo erectus, a widely dispersed human ancestor that spread through Asia nearly two million years ago. Homo erectus individuals were taller, heavier, and possessed much larger brains. When some of these populations became trapped on Flores, the process of island dwarfism gradually 
gradually reshape their bodies and their way of life. An alternative but equally intriguing theory proposes that Homo floresiensis may not have come from Homo erectus at all, but from much earlier human ancestors such as Homo habilis or even Australopithecines. These earlier hominins were considered more primitive and, until the discovery on Flores, were thought to have never left Africa. If the Flores hominins were indeed descended from such ancient lineages, it would overturn long-standing models of human migration and demonstrate that very early humans were capable of displaying dispersals far beyond what had previously been believed. Another crucial piece of the mystery is how these small humans reached Flores in the first place. The island has always been separated from surrounding land by deep ocean channels, even during the lowest sea levels of the ice ages. No natural land bridge ever connected Flores to mainland Asia. This means the ancestors of Homo floresiensis must have found a way to cross open stretches of sea. Whether they constructed primitive rafts, clung to natural debris carried by storms, Storms, or use some other form of simple watercraft, the implication is extraordinary. These hominins represent some of the earliest humans to engage in seafaring activities. Such behavior demonstrates not only survival skills, but also an adventurous and exploratory capacity that was previously thought to belong only to much later humans. Archaeological evidence from Flores pushes their timeline even further back. Fossils discovered in 2014 at Mata Menge, another site on the island, are nearly 700,000 years old and show similar features to Homo floresiensis. This means their lineage had been thriving on Flores far longer than initially thought, and astonishingly the tools they used remained consistent for hundreds of thousands of years, showing cultural continuity and the ability to pass down knowledge through generations. Their tools were simple but effective. Stone flakes, cutting blades, and sharpened points. These were used for butchering animals, woodworking, and possibly as spear tips for hunting. Combined with evidence of fire use in Liangbua Cave, including burnt stegodon bones, this suggests advanced planning and community cooperation. This was not random scavenging. This was organized survival. So what happened to these remarkable humans? For years, scientists thought they may have survived until as recently as 12,000 years ago but more accurate dating techniques pushed their extinction back to about 50,000 years ago. And this timing raises eyebrows, because that's exactly when another species began spreading across Southeast Asia, us, Homo sapiens. The overlap is suspicious. Did we wipe them out, directly or indirectly? History shows a pattern. Neanderthals vanished soon after modern humans arrived in Europe. The Denisovans disappeared after we spread into Asia. It's possible Homo floresiensis suffered the same fate. Whether it was through direct conflict, competition for food, or diseases brought by our species, our arrival may have been the final blow. Another possibility is natural disaster. Flores sits in a volcanically active region. Massive eruptions could have devastated the island ecosystem, but the coincidence of timing with human arrival is difficult to ignore. Either way, Homo floresiensis eventually vanished, but their discovery changed science forever. They shattered the idea that evolution is a neat linear ladder leading directly to us. Instead, it's a branching tree filled with experiments, dead ends, and surprising adaptations. They proved that brain size alone doesn't define intelligence. They showed that humans could shrink dramatically in response to environmental pressures and still survive. And most importantly, they expanded the range of what we thought was possible in human history. Were they monsters? Number were they myths? Number they were small but strong, vulnerable but resourceful, isolated but innovative. For over half a million years, they carved out a life on an island that should have killed them. Homo floresiensis weren't terrorizers, they weren't victims, they were survivors, and in their own way, legends. Their story is a reminder that sometimes the smallest species can leave the biggest mark on science. And as long as their fossils remain, the hobbit humans will continue to challenge our imagination and rewrite our history. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.